first time you ever had a game winning shot like that or ever in your career? Never, not even in high school. Uh, big shot came out of crunch time. And um, like I said, I'd do anything for my team to get them a win. And we just executed the play. Did you ask for it or did the coach say you're getting it? Uh, Well, at first he drew up a play. And I think I was supposed to get the lob. And he was like, no, 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 we're going to run this. And every time we run it, every time I roll back to the ball, it never fails. I'm always open. You always score on that one play. I do. I do. And um, this time, well, at first it was in 2-3, so it kind of threw it out the first time. But I, we knew they were going in man. So when she jumped, got me the ball, score. Now how did you know they were going in man? Well, when they came out, at first she was like 2-3. Then when they switched, and it was like, man, I said, All right, okay, bucket. I mean, that's what I'm thinking in my head. I told Erica, and then that's when Coach told Erica, instead of going over top, go low. Her man went with, with her. Kelsey man went her. She jerked up a little bit. My man stepped in to help a little bit and scored. Because talk about Erica's play too. So she been in for like seven seals. She had a couple of really big ones too. Uh, Erica is like an energizer bunner. She brings all the energy to the team defensively. Best defensive lockup player that I know. And when I'm on the court with her, I feel I, I have a lot of, you know, I have a good feeling that good things are going to happen when she's guarding the ball. And I knew she, she told us and was coming out. She was like, I got y'all. And all of a sudden, ball deflected off a of red. She knew it was our ball, and she made a big play. You can't ask for more than that. What does this win do? I mean, I know it's just obviously a few minutes afterwards, but to look like you were going to lose. Yeah. Uh, to, to win it and then to go on the road. I mean, if you had lost this game, miserable. That, that flight would have been what? I mean, miserable. Yeah. Uh, Coach Matt. You just you, you just gotta know Coach you, Matt, but you, you just basically made your Thanksgiving then. Yes, we did. Um, like he just stated in the locker room, y'all would not want to lose that game on a flight with me. No, we wouldn't have. Um, wouldn't have heard the end of it. But uh, win, we got a win. We found a way. And um, Coach Matt been telling us some song that you know there's a song that Mama said there's gonna be days like this, and um, it's gonna be days like this. We're gonna have some ups and downs, but we just gotta find a way. And today was the day that we found a way to get a win. And I'm excited for my team going on the road because we needed a win. What are you seeing on the, on the court? You know, y'all kind of struggled shooting the ball in the second half, then you more than you know than the first half. Uh, well, when you know when we're, we're um when we're struggling from shooting, you know, there's a time when you got to play defense. So uh, it came down to who wanted it more. It came down to who was gonna lock up and play defense. And um, I guess in the last seconds of the game. Ole Miss wanted it more. My teammates wanted it more. And I could see it in their eyes that we wanted it more. And um, as you can see, we got the win. I like the end results. Five games five games, and How do you feel like everything's kind of going with, with all the new players? Uh, Well, everything right now, we're, we're still trying to find our way. Um, but as you can see, uh, the, the young players, they're growing up. Um, well, all the new players, including Erica, first year here too. So um, we're just going to keep moving forward. Uh, Correcting our mistakes going into this game. We got to uh, get better defensively, uh, rebound a lot more, which that comes on my part as well. And, um, you know, buy in as a team. And I think, you know, this year is going to be a great year. I think our, our first, I think our first um, opening media day press conference that we had. Um, I made mention that we're probably going to win games we probably shouldn't win. We're probably going to lose games that we probably should win. And I think this one could have won in either category, both categories. And, um, you know, we've got a young basketball team, and I sound like a recording, but they're getting, be they're getting older every day. They're starting to see stuff every day, which is really, really good. Um, we did not play our best today. Um, full credit to SEMO. Simo um, got in some zone. We haven't seen a lot of zone all year. You're up 12, and they get in zone. And our young kids, for the first time in their college career, they see somebody playing zone. And they get panicky, and they start looking around. They don't know where to go. So that the good thing about that is we saw that now. We can talk about it and show film on it and get better from it. But what a way to win it. Um, as I told the team, from the first day this team got together in May, I don't care how we win games. I don't care if we win by 50 or we win by one. Let's just figure out a way to win games. And at the end there, we figured it out and just real, real happy um, to get that win. Proud of our team for continuing to fight. Everyone on fault. And I'm just real happy about that. And um, we got to get better on some things, and we will. But, um, you know, you, get, you find out what you got in, in big games like that, and that was a good win for us. Questions for Coach? 
Having said what you said about you not playing as well, maybe a little hangover from Sunday, the mm -hmm. emotional. And then, but how good is SEMA? I mean, how did, what did you what did you expect from them coming in? Did you expect some of that kind of you know zone and fight and all that kind of stuff? I haven't shows? seen them play any zone, and so we'd watch. They played three games. Um, they you know they won the first game pretty handily. They won, lost their next two, but didn't play well. Um, they got they went to Missouri and they didn't play very well at Missouri. They're, they the Missouri beat them by one or two points last year. And you could tell Missouri came out with a little extra motivation, ready to play them. And Semo didn't make shots early. And, uh, you know, so that hurt them there. Against St. Louis, they led for the majority of the game, and they got caught in some foul trouble there at the end. And that St. Louis was able to pull away from them there and get ahead of them and beat them. And so I was watching them. As I was watching them, I told the staff, I said, look, guys, they, they've got some players that can, that can make some plays if we're not in tune to what's going on. Um, our communication is something that's got to get, get better. We're not communicating very well defensively. And so our problems and where we're leaving people open defensively at times now is not designed to leave those people open. Our communication is causing that. Our communication as a team has to improve. Um, and that's something that we're, I'm harping on them every day with. Um, Erica Sisk is up there and we get in a huddle and she's just um, – screaming at our post players that y'all have to call a screen so I can change an angle and we can get this girl in a trap. If you don't call it, I can't do it. And she's 100% right. I don't know if y'all heard me late in the game screaming at Tia. Talk to her. Let her know. Because you're not – I mean, that's that's things that we have to do is communicate. Is that why some of the backdoor stuff was That's why, yeah, yeah. We had no communication. We were not talking on some things. Um, our help side wasn't there. We're just kind of standing – gets. We got frustrated with gets the zone offensively, and we let that frustration carry over into our defense. And so early in the game, our defense was just unbelievable. We locked them up for the majority of the first half, had a great first half. We had some letdowns there um, towards the end of the half, but we had a really good first half defensively. We come out in the second half, and it was just kind of kind of leveled off. But you got we had an emotional game on Sunday. I've got to do a, I've got to understand this too, as I tell everybody else this. We had an emotional game on Sunday that could have went either way. We played within 48 hours later, we tip up again against a pretty darn good team that's coming in here real motivated. This is a Super Bowl for a SEMO type team to beat an SEC team. They come in here with nothing to lose and they're going to play all out and just play as well as they can. And I get a lot of credit to them because they played really, really well. He did a great job preparing his team playing here. And then tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we're flying to Reno, Nevada. And so I'm in practice yesterday, and I, as we're walking off, I hear our players talking, our young players are talking about, am I going to get an itinerary? What time is the flight on Wednesday? Um, what time do we get there? My mom wants to know what the airlines were flying. Some of us flying for the first time. What's the airplane number that we're flying on? So you're talking about that, and I'm like, guys, stop worrying about that, and let's worry about SEMO. But you know that's playing on them. You had an emotional game on Sunday. You got to get back up and play on Tuesday, and then you're leaving tomorrow morning at 6. And so all that's going through these young players' heads. And so um, I think that had a big effect. We got out early, um, playing really well. And the same type of situation happened to us at middle where we got out early, playing really well. And I told the team right there after the game, from seniors down to freshmen, it's not just freshmen, we let up. It's like we let off the gas, gas pedal a little bit, like, okay, we're here, we're up, we can cruise into the half, we'll be fine. We've got to get out of that mode and keep the pedal down and keep pushing forward, and we will. But, hey, at the end of the year, like I told them, the postseason play is, is on two things, W's and L's. Do you have more W's than you have L's? They don't look to see that Tia Fowler who hit a last-second shot, and they don't look at none of that. They look at who wins and who loses, and if you got enough wins, you're in. And that's the big thing that we got today. we got to win. Anything else for Coach? The last play, I'll, I'll explain the last play, um, and I want to make mention that Tiff Fowler who made the last second shot, did a great job on that. Erica Sis did exactly what she's supposed to do. Kelsey Briggs did exactly what she's supposed to do. Gracie Fazell did exactly what she was supposed to do, and Queen Hayes made the pass to where, where it was open. They all five executed. Sunday against middle, we had a lot of execution problems coming out of timeouts. We come out of a huddle, and all five kids were engaged. That's progress with a young team. That's something that excites me because on Sunday we didn't do that. Today we did.
that's exciting for me. We'll carry that over, and we got a big Pac-12 opponent on Sun on Friday against Utah that we need to get a big win against another power conference team. So the kids are real excited about that, and I thank you guys. And Tia did say she, that you score on that all the time. We do. A lot do. of times in practice. We, we, we work on it a lot in practice. Luckily, for some unknown reason, the good Lord told me not to run it this game until right there at the end. Oh. And so we had not run it the whole game. And, um, you know, everybody, when we line up in that formation, they think we're going to lob it to Tia. And so their coaches were down there screaming, lob to Fowlerou, lob to Fowlerou, lob to Fowlerou. Yeah. And what we did was just kind of change it around where we was getting it to Kelsey and we was looking to get Tia on the backside, getting them all to run to Kelsey for the lob and then Tia sealing back in. And I told Queen, I said, look, look, Tia first. If she's not open, throw it to Kelsey and let Kelsey tip it in because Kelsey's going to be open. And Queen looked Tia first and Tia was open and Tia went right up and scored it. So that was, that was good. That's execution. I was real proud of them. Seemed like Erica kind of changed the game, especially their late with their defense. Changes every game. Um, changes every game. And, and um, she did a better job of taking care of the ball today. She had a couple turnovers. She gets tired from time to time because Coach Matt plays her a lot of minutes. Um, but Erica Sisk, I know one thing, every game she's bringing it. Her shooting percentage is not a concern of mine because she's going to make shots. She makes those shots. She went three for 14 today, and she gets those same shots on Friday. She'll go eight for 14 because them are shots that she makes every single day. And like I told her, she came to the huddle, you keep shooting it. The last place she got the deflection on, um, she, she's a lot smarter than I am because I was telling her to get up the line and deny, but she does it in practice all the time, and I'm always screaming at her, get up the line and deny, and she comes from behind and steals the ball. And, um, you know, she did that, and we came to the huddle. I was just hoping it was our ball when they went and looked at it. And Erica assured me, she said, Coach, I, it's our ball. And so that was, that was relieving. But she made a big-time play there, Erica did. And Erica does that for us. About made one earlier right there on that sideline for a big one to put us in the lead there. So it's two plays at the end of the game. The Erica Sis is a winner. She wants to win basketball games. She won in high school. She's winning in college. That's a winner right there.